Today, we're turning the simple butternut squash into a velvety, cozy soup, perfect for any fall meal. <laughs> Let's dig in. The key to making the most amazing butternut squash soup you've ever tasted starts in the prep. First thing we're gonna do is go over how to cut your butternut squash safely. Unless you're a samurai using a sword, it's a battle to cut through with ease. Laying it down, find a side that doesn't force it to roll and remove part of the top with the stem, bracing the squash with an empty hand. I start by leaning the knife into the top and slightly sawing to pierce the skin. From here, I'm gonna rock back and forth and even sometimes pulling the knife out completely from the squash to find a better entry point until I'm completely through. Now there is plenty of ways to cut a butternut squash, but I'm using this method so I can use it as a dome to cover my garlic when roasting, which you will see later in the video. But this also helps me preserve some space on my baking tray. From here, with cutting, we just want to make sure like items are uniform in size. For example, the carrots and the celery, or the apples and the onion. I'm using one big tray to pull everything together. Then I'm looking for a time that's right in between everything to help me reach my cooking goal, where I find all the items are acceptably cooked through. We'll talk more about the acceptably part in a bit. A better option would be to have two baking trays and to pair your items like this instead. This is gonna align those cooking times in a bit of a cleaner way, allowing you to remove the trays at its peak cooking time. So not overdone, but also not underdone. I mentioned acceptable cooking times. We'll take a look. Wow. What happened here? This apple still tastes great, although it looks like a microwave marshmallow. Granny Smith apples do this thing when they've been heated too high for too long. So the question is, what are my options? I could have removed the apples earlier, hence that two baking tray method. Or I could have went with Gala or Fuji apples, which may not have given me that tart balance that I'm looking for in the recipe, but they hold up great under these same circumstances. Either way, it's all good. The apple still tastes great, although it exploded. And a little secret, everything's going into a blender. 
so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> This is so smooth. From here, we poured it into a bowl, layer it with some toppings, and enjoy. This keeps in the refrigerator for up to a week, and it can be frozen and stored for even longer. If you're not into butternut squash, you could also use sweet potatoes. The coconut milk, it adds body and smoothness. Not only that, it's a good healthy fat to help pair with all of this nutrition. You could leave it out or even add some roasted, unsalted cashews right into the blender with the soup and still get the benefit of all three, the body, the smoothness, and the nutrition. The full recipe can be found linked in the description or you could head right over to my website, makeitdairyfree.com. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and don't forget subscribing. Till next time, believe in good. <laughs> Peace. Thank <laughs> you.